Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlotthauer here with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Sunday, September 21st, 2025. In today's tropical weather outlook and discussion, we are keeping an eye on our ensemble models and our deterministic models as they have been highlighting a chance of tropical development in the southwestern Atlantic near Bermuda over the next 7 to 10 days. Will we get another tropical storm or hurricane getting quite close to the eastern United States in the 10-day forecast or Bermuda? We'll, we'll be breaking all those details down. So with that being said, let's take a look now at our latest GOES-19 True Color Visible Satellite Imagery here provided by Dr. Levi Cowan at TropicalTidbits.com. And as we can see, we now have Hurricane Gabrielle with winds at 75 miles an hour. This is moving pretty much due north away from pretty much Bermuda Island and it's going to be rounding the western periphery of the subtropical ridge out here over the eastern Atlantic and the system is going to basically go out to sea and remain away from any land areas over the next 7 to 10 days. So we're not going to talk a whole lot about Gabrielle in today's update. But instead, there are additional tropical waves out here. We have a little bit of a tropical wave right here that we're watching closely, as well as the National Hurricane Center. Here's another tropical wave here, and it does appear there's about to be another tropical wave that's going to be coming off of Africa. So an active period is starting to show up here in our satellite imagery than what we had just recently. You can see what the National Hurricane Center is saying over the next seven days from their graphical tropical weather outlook. They're highlighting a 20% chance of a tropical disturbance. Again, the one that we were just talking about here out in front of this main area of interest that everybody is watching closely. So again, two tropical waves. One has a lemon on it, a 20% over the next seven days. And the other one here has a 50% chance of tropical development over the next seven days. So things are starting to get pretty active out there in the Atlantic, but will this amount to too much as far as land impacts? And the answer is yes and no, maybe so, especially on this system right here. This one could actually get much closer to the Eastern seaboard than what Aaron did. But this one here in orange is likely to be the one that most models indicate that this is also gonna turn out to see. So the one in the back, I'm not as concerned about, but the one out here in front is what I'm a little more concerned about at this given time being because of what I'm about to show you. All right, now before we get to our models, I did want to kind of step back and change the subject here briefly and look at um, Super Typhoon Ragasa that is in the, the tropical um, uh, West Pacific here. And this is impacting, um, basically, it's going to be going through the Luzon Strait in the next, say, 24 to 36 hours here. If this could actually cooperate with us, you can see there is this super typhoon there. It did undergo an eyewall replacement cycle and did that pretty quickly now. So we have a much larger and clearer eye than what we had previously with winds that are still estimated from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center or the Japanese, that's how they say it. Um, basically, that they have their own hurricane center there and they are still forecasting that this is going to strengthen a little bit more as it goes over the Luzon Strait just to the north of the Philippines, but just to the south of Taiwan in that 36 hour period with winds between about 165 to even 180 miles an hour, making this a very intense catastrophic typhoon on all scales, especially when it goes over some of these islands. Anyone, anybody that lives there needs to have already should have been able to evacuate safely because of how strong this actually is. We were also fortunate to get a SSMIS uh, microwave pass on this system and you can see whatever little eye there actually is here is basically being absorbed with a much more well-defined outer eye wall right here which indicates again the eye wall replacement cycle has nearly finished at this time and Nagasa is likely to re-intensify even further than what it already is right now. How much stronger will this get? There's a lot of a little bit of uncertainty, but most of the models do explicitly show this re, uh, maintaining category five intensity here as a super typhoon as it approaches the uh, northern Philippine island there of the peninsula as well as southern Taiwan in the coming hours there. 
We also got another um, different pass. This is from the ATMS indicating a very, very intense eye wall that is in place right now with a lot of lightning, a lot of intense winds that are being represented by this. And this is all pretty much headed in this general direction over some of these islands. So again, I cannot say this enough. If you have not evacuated any of the islands here through the Luzon Strait, this is the time to do so. This is going to be a catastrophic um, situation where we will have total devastation being made by this typhoon. So please, please take this seriously if you have not already. And here's a look at the quick forecast on the Habs A on Super Typhoon Ragasa here as it approaches the northern Philippine there as well as the southern Taiwan region. Take note, again, all these um, beige colors indicate very intense Category 5 Super Typhoon winds here with pressures that are extremely low, perhaps as low as 900 millibars. That is very, very intense, far intense than what we had with air in here. And additional strengthening is possible throughout the afternoon hours and the evening hours of uh, tonight. Well, for them, it's going to be the early morning hours. You can see pressures still hovering around that 900 millibar range, but winds here topping at 150 to 155 knots. So again, a violent typhoon by all means, and this would be the case all the way over the next 18 hours as it passes over these islands. Keep in mind, hurricane force winds impacting the northernmost tip there of the mainland of the Philippines, as well as, again, some of these other islands near the Luzon Strait producing, again, winds that are Category 5 intensity. And then the system should gradually weaken just a little bit, but that pressure down to about 905, 908 millibars still suggests that this could re maintain very close to a Category 5 or maintain a Category 5 up until landfall here over um, China eventually. I sure hope I got my geography right there on that second landfall, folks, because, as you know, I'm not very familiar with the Western Pacific by any means with my typhoons and the locations of them, so I hope I did a pretty good job on that. Now, without further ado, let's take a look now at our global computer models on the tropics here in the Atlantic. First off, looking at the European model, and as we can see here, definitely a system that we really have to watch again in the short term is Gabrielle as we Move this forward, you can see Gabrielle moving safely to the east of Bermuda. So again, no direct impacts over Bermuda are expected. However, we are going to keep an eye on this tropical wave here and another one here, and then perhaps another area of disturbed weather moving off of Africa. So again, a train of tropical waves coming off of Africa right now is to be expected since we are just past the peak of hurricane season. In fact, roughly about 11 or 12 days past that point already and you can see with what we're dealing with so going forward here over the next four days you can see again our two areas of disturbed weather the european model not very enthused on these two tropical waves actually it's enthused more on the one to the east but fortunately that one is going to be headed out to sea as you can see here as we put this into motion can see what ends up happening pretty much going exactly where Gabrielle is moving, but only this system would be a little bit more stronger than what we have with Gabrielle or what the forecast is calling for once it goes east of Bermuda. But you don't see a second disturbance here at all, and that's why we are going to be looking at the GFS model in today's update. And then going forward in time, you can see what that um, system ends up doing. It becomes, of course, probably a very strong tropical storm or if not a low-grade hurricane and then gets absorbed into the westerlies. Now, looking at the GFS model here, you can see there is Gabrielle, which the GFS did quite well with Gabrielle thus far than what the European model did. So again, we can give a huge round of applause to the GFS model, uh, predicting Gabrielle quite well, pretty far out in time, which is quite important with what I'm about to show you here. So as we go into about three days here, again, disturbance number one moving over Puerto Rico. Here's a little second area of disturbed weather behind it. Uh, not an ideal setup here for any tropical development, but watch what happens. That uh, f wave behind um, the, uh, the yellow, what we call the lemon, this gets absorbed into this wave right here. And what ends up happening is you end up getting uh, TCG formation over the south southwestern Atlantic in about five days. And this would be 
a weak tropical storm with winds of about 35 to 45 miles an hour in about five days, which is reasonable, but there's a lot of uncertainty in the modeling. And then what ends up happening is uh, this gets a lot closer to the eastern seaboard. And as we zoom in, you can see our area of disturbed weather getting very, very close, similar to with what we had with Hurricane Aaron when it was not far off the coast of Cape Hatteras there and then moving up the eastern seaboard before it turns out and moves off to the east. That's at least with what the GFS is showing over the next seven days, something that is bear watching since it has been somewhat consistent here in the last um, several model runs. You can see um, in uh, yesterday morning's model run, it had the system here and then uh, the yesterday's 18Z model run had it over here. And then uh, quite similar to a 0Z model, 06Z run, and then now our 12Z run. And we'll see what the 18Z GFS shows once it starts rendering. Actually, I think it is already beginning to render in right now. Nope, we do not have the latest frame in on the 18Z just yet. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if this uh, sticks around on future model runs and becomes a pretty big problem along the eastern seaboard. Now, uh, let's take a look here really quickly at what the artificial intelligence model is showing, which is also in somewhat of agreement, but only a little bit slower or actually doesn't show our system at all like the GFS is showing. So if we look at this forecast right about here, you can see there is our tropical system on the GFS in recent model runs. And here it is on the APHIS model, the European Artificial Intelligence but is a little bit more aggressive with wave number two. That's the one that is highlighted in orange. This goes uh, to the north safely though, but is just to the west of Bermuda. So the fat side, the windy, dirty side, it would be passing uh, right over Bermuda with tropical storm force winds in that case. But the artificial intelligence model does not indicate any scenario with what the GFS is showing, which is what I'm a little why I'm a little skeptical. And that's why I haven't been really doing a lot of tropical updates recently is just because there's a lot of uncertainty. Things get keep being pushed back. There's a lot of fluidness in the modeling and there's just no consistency. Because I learned the hard way back in late July and August, I kept on predicting, oh, we're going to have a lot of development by late July, early August. It really never came to pass. And same thing happened. I thought maybe early September into mid-September, we'll get a lot of development. We did with Gabrielle, but like the overall setup has been very out of whack this year, been a big funk in terms of the background state, really not cooperating at all. So therefore, we're just going to use a euro on our water vapor imagery or a deep layer moisture plot. Brown colors indicate a lot of dry air. Teal, blue, and green colors indicate a lot of moisture here. And as we put this into motion, you can see there it goes Gabrielle moving towards the east here within the westerly flow, remaining a hybrid-like tropical storm, if not a hurricane for sure, in days to come as this moves off to the west. And then here comes our next system developing out of the main development region but again this one too is going to go out to sea like all of our others which i'll tell you i'm not complaining about this at all i am not disappointed at this uh, point in time i'm actually blessed and thankful to the lord almighty jesus christ that all of these systems have been out to sea and have not caused a lot of impacts other than Aaron brought a lot of rainfall to some of the um, the leeward islands, you know, the, the southern end of that, and brought some high surf to the eastern seaboard. But overall, this hurricane season has been downright good in a sense and has not been very impactful at all. That could change, though, once we go into October. I'm not going to let my guard down on that, but really, I mean, as we go forward each passing day and each passing week, things are only going to get more unfavorable out here in the Atlantic because of our westerly winds. The polar jet stream is going to start increasing as we go into autumn and um, winter eventually. And just overall, I just don't see much in the way of development after we get past probably about the early part of October. And you can see here on the Euro, not showing any development at all through the first full week of October, which isn't too surprising given the fact that, again, we have too much dry air out here in the Atlantic, 
too much vertical wind shear that we are also dealing with. In fact, if we look at the vertical wind shear, I mean, this is not an optimal uh, environment at all for any of these tropical waves. So that is why I have been kind of silent behind the scenes, not doing much videos on the tropics, just because honestly, in my own opinion, I think we're done. After these two or three tropical waves finish up, I think we might be done for the season. I say might because I'm not 100% sure on everything, but man, this is one heck of a unfavorable state in the atmosphere. Just too much sheer and dry air out there in the Atlantic and even across the, the, the Caribbean and the Gulf. I mean, yuck. That's what I'm saying here with our hurricane season. Now, with that being said, here's a look at the ensemble forecast from the European ensemble, and you can see that second wave a little aggressive on that, but not as aggressive with any other tropical wave out there. Uh, the one that's highlighted in lemon, that's the yellow area. Not much model support on that from the Euro. A little bit more support, though, from the GEFS ensemble with that, but not as much support here with that orange area highlighted from the National Hurricane Center. But from our AI models, oh yeah, it's a different ball game here from the Google DeepMind models showing very intense development here and intensification with a lot of red, a lot of pink here indicating significant development with that area highlighted in orange from the National Hurricane Center. And then of course, our other tropical wave that we have to watch over the Southwestern Atlantic being highlighted as well with some development possible with that, but not a 100% guarantee. So we're really gonna need to watch um, ensembles very closely going forward and its deterministic forecasts as well. Because the GFS model being quite consistent over the last four or five model runs really raises eyebrows to a lot of people. And then looking at another uh, Google generation DeepMind model, also again, uh, very coherent here with that signal with that second wave developing into something pretty significant, similar to Gabrielle and if not Aaron. Again, going out to sea most likely, but some of the tracks here do bring this close enough to the Bahamas as well as Florida, where we might, we're gonna probably have to start talking about this if necessary. But anyways, if you haven't been here before and you did find this tropical weather outlook and discussion very helpful, detailed, informative, and life-saving, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell notification icon to get daily tropical weather updates and live streaming coverage on the tropics if we ever do get a landfall this hurricane season as well as please hit the like button and share this video with their family and friends on social media. As always, have a great rest of your Sunday afternoon and evening, folks, on the 21st of September, 2025. Tomorrow will be the first day of uh, astronautical fall and autumn. So I'll see you guys back here tomorrow if necessary, if anything changes in the tropics. Thanks for watching.